good exercise. <laughs> well, um, why don't we wait another minute for the latecomers to sync their cameras and not their microphones, and then we'll get things started. So talk amongst yourselves. But mute. Hi, everyone. Hi, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Oh, yeah. Uh, why don't we wait another minute for one, one of my favorite things. Happy to be in the same everyone. Uh, <laughs> is that you can sing all the parts you want. So tonight, I don't know, some hybrid of soprano and alto is going to happen. And guess what, guys? You are not going to be alone on that tavern number. I am ready. Tenor. Tenor. Right with you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Can we drink while we sing Beat Beat? Please. Yes. I've been singing fake words in my head all day. Nice background, Dale. Jeff, it's great to see you. Hey, Yes, I made it. Hey, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. I couldn't miss it. <laughs> Good. Hey, Dale. Well, I think let's get started. Mm -hmm. Jody is lurking. <laughs> I I told Jody he doesn't have to stay for the whole thing, but he's got to hear the first movement. Oh, Fortuna. Yes, indeed. For those of you who are connecting, especially on YouTube, my name is Dale Weber, and I'm the president of the choir, which means I get to start this fun evening. A uh, reminder that as we get going, everyone will be muted by our administrator, Jade. And we ask that you please use the Q&A chat session or the chat chat session for your Q's and A's. We have people actually assigned to monitor them. And at appropriate times, they will pass questions on to the maestro or other people who can answer those questions. So it truly is interactive in a way. Welcome to the almost 50 people who are joining on Zoom tonight and the countless thousands that are able to connect via simultaneous, okay, 20 second delay on YouTube. It's a new experience for the Portland Symphonic Choir, and we welcome everyone, even my relatives, who are keying in tonight. You'll notice, especially on the YouTube link down in the description, there is a clever link there for a donate button. You can always do that because it's a nonprofit and these times of COVID, yeah, that's what we always ask, I suppose. Also, I'm reminded on our website, pschoir.org, there's a ton of growing information about our legacy project. And you choir members out there, if you have snapshots, stories, videos, all kinds of things, Alyssa Dieter, who is right down there, at least for me, she's probably all over the place for you guys. Wave, Alyssa. She would love to hear from you with your legacy things as she's working on building quite an impressive uh, virtual and online scrapbook with cool things. So stand by for that. One of the cool things, speaking of which, about doing this with Zoom is having everyone muted, we don't care so much about your iPhone and whether or not it's ringing or the pets walking around behind you. I have a lot of pets behind me. Ha <laughs> ha. The idea is to have a good time. You might learn something new, but as has been expressed earlier tonight, you can sing any part you like. No one's keeping track of lip movement. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our co-director, Alyssa, take it away. Hello, everybody. It's good to see all of you. I miss seeing your faces, and I'm so glad that um, we're going to start our winter song rehearsals soon so that we can see each other um, every week. It's going to be wonderful to get back into a schedule again where we get to share each other um, through music. But tonight, we get to share Carmina Burana, and we get to share it with a phenomenal conductor. I'm going to introduce Maestro Ime Paolo, and it's He's just so amazing. It's just almost too big to talk about, but I will give you a couple highlights that really stood out to me. That his godfather was Kodai, which is awesome. That he went to the Vienna Academy of Music to study. That he's been in the States conducting um, for years since the 70s, but he's a world-class conductor and has conducted everywhere around the world. He was a uh, professor of uh, conducting and opera and instrumental studies, I think, at Indiana. University 
uh, from like the mid 1990s until 2006. And then he went on to the University of Sid Sydney to the conservatory there to be a professor. And then as he came back and continued to conduct opera all around the United States, we got to also enjoy having him on our podium here at Portland Opera. And although he's conducted everywhere all around the world, we like to sort of think of him as our Northwest, um, in our Northwest son. And we're so glad that you now live so close to us. And Ray, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, uh, uh, Alyssa, I appreciate it. Well, of course, uh, I, I came since um, the mid 80s already uh, to Portland and uh, started working with the Portland Opera. Um, every two years I, I came back and that's how I met my wife, as a matter of fact. Um, I came in here to conduct uh, Carmen and uh, my wife was sitting in the first violins and uh, I, I just looked around and suddenly I see this beautiful young lady. Um, and that that's how it really started and now we are together and happily married since about 23 years. So I have a real connection uh, to the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we traveled, I mean, uh, first we moved out to Bloomington, Indiana, then we went together to Sydney, then we had a home in uh, Florida for a short while, and then we decided um, home should be um, the Pacific Northwest, and, and we are enjoying it, uh, especially when uh, we can even breathe. Um, and uh, as, as you said, I, I was teaching and teaching conducting. And one thing is, which I teach uh, to every class and every young person who came to uh, study with me, uh, have the pieces you are conducting pretty well memorized, because otherwise you may not discover your future wife in the orchestra. <laughs> so... <laughs> And all that, good uh, things. <laughs> oh, that's very important. Uh, you know, you can't know how many uh, conductors who have their heads kind of like this never met the, their happiness because of not knowing the score. I mean, that's the knowledge of the score is not only there um, to um, work together with the musicians you are work with, uh, choir, instrumentalists, and so on, uh, soloists but to find your future wife. That's what it's all about. And of course it happened in Portland. Yeah, it happened here in Portland. Absolutely. So that's that's uh, my connection. So when, when, when you got in touch with me, uh, that's anything for Portland. I, I would do. Well, thank you. We're glad you're here. We're going to do a very quick little warm up. And so I'm going to lead that. Um, I haven't had the um, pleasure of leading you all in a while. So we're just going to take a nice quick little warm up and we're going to start with a very narrow ooh vowel. Almost like a kazoo and it's going to be So everybody join in. Hopefully you're all on mute if you're in the Zoom. And let's get started.
Stay the same. B, B, ba, bo, boo. Sit up straight, give yourself some room for your diaphragm to bounce, and let's get to work. Here we go. And I just wonder if all those uh, people who originally sang these songs uh, did this much uh, warm up originally. But that was beautiful. You have a beautiful voice. I just enjoyed it very much. I uh, may want to add, I had my father was an opera singer. So that's where my love for uh, voice is uh, coming from. And his name was also Imre Paolo. And he started giving me voice lessons. And after a few lessons, eventually he said, not with my name and your voice. So that ended my singing career. And that's why I wasn't singing along with him. Um, to get back uh, to, uh, for the reason why we got together, and the reason is I think that all you people then start singing, on a nicer sounding voice than mine. Um, but I thought it, it would be interesting just to have a little introduction into Carmina Burana, uh, 
its history and how it, it uh, uh, came to being. Um, Carmina Burana is, um, means really songs from Benedict Bayern. Benedict Bayern is a cloister in uh, southern Germany, in Bavaria, and that's where they discovered um, these songs, um, uh, this manuscript, um, which had, of course, many more uh, uh, songs than uh, uh, Orff eventually picked to, um, uh, put, uh, put to music to it. And um, mostly these songs were sung um, by, uh, as they called them, uh, Goliards. Goliards were young people traveling and spreading uh, these songs all over uh, Europe. Um, they were students who were singing the poetry of earthly pleasure and uh, other uh, subjects. Uh, they were, most of them anyway, um, they were studying at the universities uh, in uh, Europe. And as um, you may know, um, most of the Europe, uh, European um, universities were born um, f by the religious organizations, by monks. Uh, so uh, these young people were ongoing monks. And then suddenly when they kept traveling, maybe they weren't that monk-like. Um, but um, that, that was the thing, because all these schools were religious. So you went there. That's what you studied, and then you went out and uh, discovered that uh, maybe there is more to life um, than wearing an uncomfortable uh, toga or whatever they are, and um, enjoying uh, life, enjoying music, enjoying the travel. Um, several people who got into this were also, it's interesting to know in Europe, um, in the aristocracy, only the firstborn was the one who um, inherited the uh, estates of, of the parents. And the second, third one, uh, the second one was usually sent out um, uh, to become a, a, a priest or a monk or something like that, usually priest, because that way their survival was guaranteed in those cloisters. They served food, uh, they served everything else. And um, then eventually, you know, first uh, those things were just uh, those, uh, what they were wearing was kept together with those ropes. And when they were climbing the hierarchy, uh, then they became bishops and uh, better doing people. Then um, the uh, belts got also wider because they gained weight and then the uh, rope wasn't uh, good enough. So there were those wider purple uh, belts which they wear and that was the war was the uh, sign of doing well. Now, so that's where the, the songs were originally discovered in 1200, 1300. Um, then uh, eventually uh, Orff got into the picture and he decided to write a, um, um, a, a piece about it, which he called, and that's very interesting, Canciones profane cantoribus e coris cantande comitambus instrumentalis atque imaginibus magicis. So, uh, songs of Bayern, that's where uh, Benedict Bayern, where it came from, secular songs for singers and choruses to be sung together with instruments and magical images. That's what he originally planned. Now we hear the piece mostly uh, um, on the concert stage, um, especially if you want to um, make a little money, if you are an organization, a choral organization, orchestra organization, it's it's uh, pretty much a guaranteed success, 
but originally it was meant for the stage. As a matter of fact, when I conducted the piece um, on Lincoln, at Lincoln Center with the New York City Opera, as long as there was still New York City Opera, we did it also with a choir on stage, then ballet and orchestra, of course. Um, um, uh, there weren't magical images, I've got to tell you. The magical images somehow were left out of this performance. But nevertheless, uh, it was magical evening since I was conducting it. Of course. <laughs> um, so um, that's kind of the wide uh, the Carmina Buran, and I assume that you are now waiting to um, sing a little bit. And so of uh, 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 the fortune, the good fortune, and even if you get good fortune, you get bad fortune, I'm sure you will know the words. And if you don't know them, it's the music which speaks. Uh, there, there is the question always, uh, which was earlier, uh, uh, prima la musica, dopo le parole, first the music, then the words, or prima le parole, dopo la musica. In, in this case, usually I'm a firm believer that uh, the words are the first and then um, the uh, composer um, composed its music to the meaning and uh, the understanding of the words. In this piece, I think it's a mixture. Uh, it's uh, Certain musical ideas must have been in, in uh, the... Uh, minds of Orf, and he wrote it then um, to the words of um, uh, these uh, songs coming from the Codex. One thing I would like to point out, uh, I'm talking always songs in the Codex. Some of them in the Codex had some melodies, but the melodies of um, Orf have nothing to do with the melodies, which in certain uh, cases of the um, these songs were written and also some of it on, on staff. The earlier notation was only that it goes upwards or downwards and you could pick how far high uh, or how far low. Um, Orff's music is Orff's music has nothing to do. The words are from the 12th, 13th century. The music is definitely uh, from the 20th century. So in that sense, Alisa, what do you think? Did I speak enough? I think you spoke a lot, and I think okay. that we can do O Fortuna. Okay, you don't have any wisdom to add to it. Uh, well, you know, I'm always such a fan of this opening because it's so powerful and it is so iconic, but I'm always such a sucker for the imagery of the wheel that happens in that ostinato. Yeah. So if you listen hard and you hear that wheel going underneath, you'll hear Fortune spinning her wheel which ties in so nicely with the words and talking about how fortune is so fickle. Um, and I think that we also discussed that we are going to do the um, O Fortuna and the Fortune Plango Vulnera back to back. So we together. will just go through together. them together. So just be prepared. And just like uh, from the Mozart, we will have the music on the video so that you don't have to be flipping your score, okay? Oh, and please enjoy this recording, what happens to be a um, Portland Symphonic Choir recording of Carmina Burana. Okay, so I'm going to have technology work for us. And that's it. I'm going to hit the play button. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, I hope you had fun singing along with this. This is music you just uh, uh, cannot stop not to sing. Um, I am not really a great fan of uh, pointing out uh, uh, musical uh, specialties because those of you who know, you know it. Those of you who don't know it, uh, shouldn't know it. It just you should only let uh, the music work its magic at you and if you know that this um, introduction in which key it was would that uh, um, change your uh, perception of the music in any way uh, Alyssa what do you think no, I think that your ability to enjoy and engage doesn't rest on how much knowledge you have of the work. Exactly that. But nevertheless, uh, since we are musicians and we have to flaunt uh, some of our musical knowledge, 
and <laughs> we will <laughs> announce. It's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, the people who are watching this and listening to this, they think, yeah, he says he's a conductor. What does he know about me? I mean, you know, anybody can say they are a conductor, put a baton in their hand, they are a conductor. And in some cases, it even is true. Anyway, um, so to flaunt our knowledge, we will announce that uh, this piece starts in D minor. And now I would like to, are there people who can talk beside us too, or how does this work? This is an excellent time for us to take any questions that people oh. might have of the first two movements. I also want to point out, I realized that when we went to the screen share that the um, QuickTime menu is blocking some words and we didn't see that coming. I don't know if I can move that, but I will try when we go back. I was afraid to touch it when okay. we were going no, through the first I, I couple songs. I wouldn't touch anything. I, uh, computers are not my uh, uh, strong side. So but Dale I, or Wendy, do we have any, um, or who is, I'm not sure who's monitoring the chats, but do we have any questions? No questions. I have here 12 on the chat. Shall I click on that or is that forbidden? You don't, Wendy is, um, she's watching the chat for us. So if she gets okay. any questions. Because I have a number 12 on the chat. Yeah, there are some comments, but no, no, no questions. Ah, uh, no questions. All right. Some chatting, well, some commenting. But. Yeah. Okay, so we flaunted our musical knowledge by saying that this was in D minor, and if that influences now how you sang along, um, I, I, it makes me happy and happier. Now let me add that uh, I mean there are. Um, I think 24 songs which uh, uh, um, Orff uh, put music under, but he made some bigger um, parts uh, of it. And so there is the Fortuna, of course, which you did. And then there is the um, Primovere, which is spring. And um, we are not playing spring, but then uf dem anger on the green so uh, which is uf dem anger means on the green and it's interesting because suddenly it switches from latin to old german or uh, some kind of german which was spoken in those days um, in the southern part of uh, germany bavaria and as a matter of fact the first number starts in latin goes into this old german and um, then uh, the numbers we picked from this um, uh, on the green uh, will be the um, Raya and then Ver uh, Duvel Alle Min, if you were uh, a lone mine. Interestingly, in German, um, they get a little bit uh, uh, more, um, how should I say, amorous. I don't know. I never heard that German was the uh, 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 language of love, but uh, um, in 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 this case, it gets more amorous. Uh, the the songs in uh, the German part of it are more um, about love and um, uh, look at me, young man. Let me please you. Uh, this kind of stuff and. Um, uh, uh, come, come, my love, I long for you. So um, anyway, the language gets a little more heated and obviously in German, uh, they feel more, they express their love. So that's that's the, uh, um, on the green, on the green, um, they, they are talking more about love. And so what we picked, uh, did, do you want to announce, Alisa, what we picked, please? Yes, we are moving into the Swasthya Gatbumba, which is uh, the second half of the Rea number nine, and then we, um, in the Kume Kum, we're doing those two um, parts of number nine, so the second and the third parts of it. And if you think about it, let me just uh, especially, um, uh, uh, we will, where is that? Kume, Kume, Kume. Um, I can't find it, but anyway, that's what it is, and enjoy.
Sorry, it wouldn't stop forming. So um, no questions, but just a comment that Imre people are finding you so delightful. And someone on YouTube said they would love to see you in person someday and maybe even with the Portland Symphonic Choir. So. Imre, I think that maybe you're muted. Am I muted? Um, not anymore. Okay. Um, anyway, yes, I, I, I'd love it. Uh, anybody who loves music and wants to work with me, I'm happy to do so. Um, as soon as we got out of this uh, vicious circle which is going around us, um, uh, I, I'd, I'd be happy. Uh, you may not know it, but I have a double degree from the Academy of Vienna since, uh, Alisa, you mentioned the thing, and I have a uh, a choral uh, conductor degree and an orchestra conductor degree, um, which I'm very proud of that I am double degreed. Um, <laughs> anyway, you know, in between I just came at, we were talking about D minor. What other D minor choral piece comes to your mind? Not only choral, though. That's uh, symphonic and uh, um, uh, choral. Famous, famous, famous. Ah. Beethoven's Ninth? Okay. Uh, uh, Beethoven's Ninth, exactly that. And starts in D minor also and ends in a triumphal D major eventually, just like this piece. Now, I don't necessarily think that uh, or thought about Beethoven nice. Well, it's an interesting little thing, just again to prove that uh, we know more about music than people would generally believe. Um, and uh, shall we move on? Because I think it's about singing more than anything else. Sure. Um, and what was the next one? Uh, We're doing the the the. Very du mm -hmm. This is still the German part of it, and it it uh, says, "If the whole world was mine, from um, the sea to the Rhine, I would starve myself so that the Queen of England might lie in my arms." Must have been a younger Queen of England at that. I actually had to look it up because it really bothered me that I didn't know, and it was Eleanor of Provence. She was married to Henry III. I see. And uh, do we have a picture of her? Um, actually, there was a little one of those, you know, 13th century sketches. Yes. <laughs> I did not think to post it, but yeah. I, I see. But uh, mm -hmm. she was younger than Lizzie now. Uh, she actually, she lived, I'm kind of guessing at her dates, but she lived to be like 60 some years old. Um, right. So she had that, a long life. Most times that was, uh, uh, yes. Yeah, that, that definitely was uh, an, an, an older thing. But anyway, probably he is talking about a younger queen of England whom he wants to lay <laughs> in his arms. So let's put the younger queen in his arms now. With music. Here we go. I just loved your enthusiasm singing along. That's that's very very. And um, look, this music takes you with uh, yourself. And 
and uh, that's why it, it's it's timeless. It's timeless. It's good now. It was good hundred years ago. Uh, I don't know. Every composer has um, uh, uh, lucky time or a lucky piece. Uh, no piece before or after was as good and as successful as as this piece is uh, by Orff. As a matter of fact, uh, once he wrote this. He said, this should be where my uh, composing uh, career should start. Well, all right. So it would have started here. Then it would have stopped pretty soon because <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was it. But um, what probably makes this uh, music interesting, it, it, it has a melodic strength, but it's, it's, it's the rhythmical. Um, if you look at the orchestration, uh, the biggest part of the orchestra are the is the percussion. I mean, they are just percussing, and percussing is obviously uh, gets our um, blood heated up, and that's what he does. Now we are moving on to the um, bigger, uh, again, a big number of it uh, in taberna, in the tavern, and in the tavern. Just like in German, they were um, thinking about love. In the tavern, they also thinking about love, uh, but they are thinking about drinking mainly. Uh, so uh, as the, the words go, when they are in the ta tavern, um, it, it's not, they don't think how we'll become dust. They hurry to gamble. And interestingly, which always makes you sad, uh, um, and then some gamble, some drink, some behave loosely. So again, the, the, uh, what uh, the drinking can do uh, to you. That's why you always should drink carefully so that you don't behave loosely as um, those uh, people discover then. So in Taberna, as I said, everybody is drinking with everybody. Everybody is happy and drinking. Uh, again, very uh, rhythmically, and uh, this uh, should be fun. That's a long song, and enjoy your drinking and singing along. If you have already, if you open something, I don't. I, I'm sitting here without. I, I saved my drinking after this program, uh, so that I don't stutter too much. Um, but uh, after that, I will drink and behave loosely. Um, <laughs> anyway, here it is in Taberna, um, and enjoy singing along with this one. Alisa, any further remarks? Uh, not really. I just find this to be so fun when they get to the laundry list of everybody who's supposed to be drinking. Yeah. It's like the best drinking game ever. And then like the um pa, -pa sound starts and I just sounds like we should all of a sudden be doing student prints for a second. So I dig all of that. And ladies, I, this is your chance. Go for it. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. 
that's all what it's about. Um, I mean, you know, I was younger. I used to drink. I never got this answer. This answer. But um, it, 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 it can uh, do to you. Uh, that was pretty darn fun. I see it from Catherine de Fever. Uh, upper time to share. What is upper time? Well, we have a we have a member. His name is Jeff Hopper. Oh, and <laughs> uh, does he drink? Uh, I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask him. All right. <laughs> All right. I have been known to drink, yes. <laughs> yeah, you have been. Good, 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 good. I, I'm proud of you. Um, occasionally, you have got to let it loose, and uh, that is what it's all about. Um, and uh, the next number is uh, the last number which we picked because we were hoping that some people have some questions. I mean, we come here so well prepared, uh, incredible musical knowledge, D minor, plus, plus, plus. <laughs> and, <laughs> and nobody wants to know what is in E flat major, for example. Uh, I can tell you the Eroica Symphony by Beethoven, for example. So uh, just to go by, by half notes, and then we can arrive to E major and F major and so on. So we can uh, pick uh, for every... Uh, um, uh, tonality uh, a piece which we may or which um, we may not know uh, the, talking e flat major it's a major symphony by beethoven it's also a major symphony by mozart it's of his last major symphonies the e flat uh, major so obviously a uh, great composer liked also e flat but uh, d minor is more the depth kind of uh, sound of the depth they say uh, and, uh, you know, you are deep thinking when you are thinking about the um, fortune being with you or without you. So the last number is Veni, Veni, Venias. Come, 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 don't let me die. Uh, you know, I, I heard many interpretations of this. Uh, the thing, don't let me die. He, 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 not sasa and beautiful your face and your eyes and whatnot, and then again, come, come, come. Uh, it could be very much um, an enjoyable get-together. Um, um, and so that's the last one. Alisa, you mentioned something that maybe we want to uh, repeat it. Just well, it's to... only, it's it's really short. What is it? It's like 45 seconds or something. It's pretty brief. Yeah, so and you know, as the come, 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 uh, you know, the enjoyment and so on, you always enjoy to repeat. Certainly. <laughs> okay, let's play it twice. Let's sing it twice. And then let's see if there are still some questions to our wise knowledge. Okay, I have I... 42 chats. Well, you can look at them while I'm playing. I we'll sing it through, and then I have to I have to re get back to that that number again. So it's going to take me just a second. So I will yeah. come back, and then maybe people will have questions for a second, and then we can sing it one more time. Okay, that's that's what we do. and then an ah, uh, come, 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 and then ah. 
Anyway. So if you sang the not satsas last time, do yourself a favor and flip to the other part. I mean, where else can you get an experience like this? There you go. So, so there was one it? question. Yes. Um, Helen wanted to know if we're ending with O Fortuna. No, we plan to end with this one. O Fortuna we did already. But if Helen wants to sing O Fortuna once more, Alisa, what do you think? Shall we give Helen a chance? Well, I like Helen, so I suppose we could do that one more time. And here's another question. Okay, it says, here's a serious question. Why are there uh, not many hits from the primitive, well, this is an intense question. Uh, <laughs> you have to read it, Imre. I don't even know this question. Wait, like there's a little on? Stravinsky and that's about it, but there was but this was hugely successful. Not sure why there aren't more. I know Orf's sequel was a flop. Hey, can you put it on somewhere that I can read the whole thing? So it's in the chat. Yeah. Go to the chat and it's um, from Wendy Hine. You'll see it. I hear a serious question. Why are there not many hits from the primitivism era? Like there is this and a little Stravinsky and that's about it. This was I'm not sure why I know our sequel was a flop. That's what we were talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, oh, and what do I suggest we imbibe after tonight's performance? I can only tell you that I'm going to pour myself a nice black label um, with a drop of water, lots of ice, and that's what I, I, I will drink. I'll uh, join you. Uh, all right, there you are most welcome. Um, my beer drinking times are over. I used to have, when I was in opera houses uh, in Germany especially, there was always the, the person who put out the score and so on. And after the performance, he brought two big glasses of beer, put it on, on, on the table there in my dressing room. One was for him, one was for me. And that's how we ended our performances. Now, um, to get serious uh, um, to Wendy, you can't predict and can't know why is one number uh, successful. And why is another not successful? This just somehow hits all the necessary, uh, um, how should I say, buds, taste buds, smell buds, uh, ear buds. Uh, do we have ear buds? Heart buds, um, whatever else, uh, enthusiasm buds. Um, it, it, it just is that, why? Are certain pieces better than others? Why are certain composers better than others? It's hard to say. Uh, Stravinsky had his uh, uh, success. It's also, it's kind of the mixture of melody and not overly uh, uh, strange harmonies and then let the rhythm section go. Um, that's what it seems to me, but I'm, I'm, I'm really not a, um, musicologist. I um, uh, read what the musicologists have to say, and then either I agree or disagree, but I, I never really sat down uh, to, to write a book about um, ana analysis and, and uh, what is why and why a D sharp at this special moment uh, gives you the shivers. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Um, all I'm trying to say is that's unexplainable in art. Uh, why a certain uh, painting gets to you and talks to you. I never forget when I entered the Sistine Chapel in, in, in Rome, in the Vatican. I just looked up at the ceiling and it just came down on me. I never had such another experience. I had wonderful experiences. I saw wonderful paintings. I saw wonderful uh, drawings and so on. Also modern uh, um, and impressionist and whatnot, uh, which uh, spoke to me very much. But that one painting to me just uh, blew me away. It's hard to say. It really is hard to say. Um, I can't ex ex explain it truly, except as I said, it obviously touches uh, certain parts of our senses 
um, because music really speaks to our senses more than anything else. And uh, it, it touches some of our senses, which, and not uh, just ours, but everybody else's, because it's still alive. It still is a, um, a cash cow, if you want to have it. It's just something which speaks to the people. And now to hear why it does, shall we do once for the beginning, Alice? Well, but we have one more question oh. from Catherine Lefevre, who is asking, do you have a favorite piece to conduct? And I have a favorite answer to that. It's usually the piece which I'm just conducting then and there. Um, a certain music uh, probably speaks more to me than others, but uh, um, many music speaks to me. I, I wouldn't want to live without uh, Othello or Falstaff, but I wouldn't want to live without La Boheme, and I wouldn't want to live uh, Mahler's Fifth. I wouldn't want to live uh, Beethoven's Eroica, we talked about E flat major, uh, or, or Mozart's E flat major symphony, or the G minor by Mozart. Uh, Bartok uh, concerto, I wouldn't want to live uh, uh, without. Uh, Kodai's um, choral piece, uh, the Psalmus Hungaricus, I never would want to be without. Uh, the symphonies of Brahms. You can't pick, you can't pick. It's like you have children. If you have, I don't know, 50 children, you will love them all. So I, I am sorry not to be able to quite answer uh, um, that question. Certain pieces, but that changes too. There were certain pieces which I never wanted to conduct and then it came across me and then I loved it. Um, one was, I never forget, in my young years in, in Germany, um, I was in Lübeck, a smaller opera company I conducted there, um, Barber. And I just said, I'm not conducting Barber well. I, I just don't do it well. So I, maybe I should never conduct it. A few years later, uh, Lake George Opera Festival, upstate New York, uh, David Lloyd was the director, and suddenly calls me, Imra, I want you to conduct um, the barber for us. I said, David, you don't want me to conduct barber. I don't conduct barber. Well, I, I, I just, you should get, no, I want you. So I was there the previous year. I doubled my salary. I said, if you pay me this much and this and this and come and give me a house there at, on the lake, then I may consider it well, knowing that it won't happen. And my management said he's already one and a half my salary taken. I said, no, I said, why should I give them a bad barber? Um, eventually they fulfilled all my wishes. I did a barber, which was wonderful. Jerry Hadley was uh, uh, singing in it. Uh, um, that was one of his first uh, productions. Unfortunately, he left us too soon and too young. Um, but it was a half a dozen, a lot of very talented young people were in, in, in that cast. Um, David Gately uh, was the stage director and a very talented uh, young man then and very successful uh, later in life. And suddenly I thought, well, I'm not doing it that badly. Maybe I, sh I, I can conduct Barber. And so I conducted there, then I went to the city opera. And uh, uh, Beverly wanted me to do her farewell tour in, in Mexico, conducting the barber. I said, maybe I'm not conducting it that badly. There is even a, a TV uh, thing on YouTube. You can find it with Beverly in, in uh, Guanajuato in Mexico. At the festival. And so anyway, did the farewell tour with her. And so who knows? Now I can conduct barber. Maybe now I can't. My, I'm, I'm too old. Imer, I have one last question for you. Yeah. One last one, and it's a big one. What other advice do you try to give uh, to emerging conductors? That's the hardest, hardest. Um, the advice which I would give is, and I tell that also to my students, uh, be prepared to be a waiter in restaurants, be prepared to do anything and everything 
and you really, really, really have to want to do it because nothing, nothing, nothing is guaranteed in the way of becoming a conductor. And how do you become a conductor? Some do it on, on, on competitions, some have openings. I, I, I was an incredibly fortunate person that I was always at the right time, at the right moment, and, and there was always a continuation. So I, I climbed the ladder one step after the next and climbed as far as I, I, I could and uh, God wanted me. Um, it, it, be committed, work as hard as you possibly can, be committed. And if you don't 100% believe that you will become the conductor you dream of it, uh, to become, then don't even start. If you are not willing to jump any and every hurdle which will be thrown your way, and it will be thrown your way. I remember months sitting out there and not knowing what am I going to do next year. Nothing is coming my way. Then suddenly a conductor jumped into a half empty pool, broke his uh, shoulder and suddenly I had a job. Where is it written that uh, somebody has got to jump into a half empty pool? Uh, it's totally the unexplainable, the uh, just be totally decided that that's the only thing you want to do in life. That's my advice. If you have a little doubt, go and, and become a lawyer, a doctor, uh, or a, a train conductor. But uh, if you want to get, because look, I mean, the whole thing, it starts with, you need 40, 50 suckers who are willing to put up with you as a young conductor who, who doesn't know diddly shit. So that's how it starts. And when you found those, then, then they look at you. I remember remarks. Um, I didn't have the best sitting tails as a young man, couldn't afford it. And the, the musicians, I got to the Dusseldorf Opera. Um, it was already a thing, the musicians came. Which waiter did you hang off that badly sitting uh, tails? I said, hey, pay me more. I will have a better sitting tail. But, um, so you, you, I mean, you can't be a conductor, as I said, without having people who are willing to put up with you. And by the time uh, you are really have something to say, I, in my opinion, 45, 50 years old until then, I wasn't a conductor, but I needed the 30 years before to practice it, to arrive to it. That when I'm 50 years old, I stand up of, uh, of an orchestra that I was waiting, when is my hair going to be gray? Because then they will uh, look at me with more respect. It's, 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 uh, and then you, you have got to know uh, your job. So preparation, uh, um, belief, and ability to swallow a lot of crap. <laughs> Thank you, Imre. Did I explain well, it well? You really did basically just explain it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so why don't we sing one last O Fortuna? So we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. And we'll see. That, that answers also your question. How do you become a conductor? A uh, Fortuna, just read it. It'll tell you. There will be highs. There will be lows. And that's what it is. We're going to spin the wheel right now. Mm -hmm. Here we go.
you have it, uh, um, it still ends in a D major, which is uh, the promise and 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 uh, that things will. Uh, but uh, I was just looking at the thing, semper crassis, out the crassis. Sometimes up, sometimes not. And that's conductor's life, that's life. Alyssa, you're muted. Alyssa, you are <gasps> mute. No, I am, I, I'm sure some people would wish that button would stay on. Please put your hands together and let's applaud for Imre. Thank you, thank oh. you. Listen, it was, it was such a pleasure to have you as our guest tonight. It was my pleasure. And as I said, I, I, I sincerely hope that um, we will still be alive and be able to hug each other. Absolutely. I look forward to that time, Emery. It was, it's been wonderful getting to know you over the last few weeks. Thank you. Same here. Same here. Thank you all. Goodbye. And Thank you, Emery. Thank, thank you, Maestro. And Black Label, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> Barry, don't sign off everybody yet. I just want to make a mention that we are still accepting people. If there are people who are visiting us tonight on YouTube who would like to sing with us this season, we are accepting members. Um, we are getting ready for our winter song. So you can come go to our website or you can email info at pschoir.org if, you if you're interested and we can direct you um, to the form so that you can fill it out. Okay? Yeah, and and Jade, it, Jade also posted, um, oh, oh, I was gonna say Jade also posted a survey in the chat. So you can give us your, um, any thoughts or suggestions you have about our September sings. If we want to stick to D major, sometimes we could do just the last movement of Beethoven night. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'll be the D major special. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all yours. You know Thank that. you so much, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Maestro. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.